Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We have an exciting show. I know I say that a lot, but I get excited about every real estate topic. As I tell everybody, ask me anything real estate. The only thing you can ask me is what to watch on Netflix. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, uh, welcome back to the channel, Mac, from NFM Lending. Uh, this is exciting, guys, because... You may have heard that New Jersey has a state-specific program for first-time home buyers where there's a grant where they will give you a certain amount of money towards your down payment and your closing costs to be applied, I believe, any way that you choose. Of course, you have to qualify for the program. That's important. But why this video is so important is that uh, that program's been around for a while. It's been several years. But this video is important because there are recent updates to this program, which you may qualify for even more. So I'm not the expert at this. Mac, you're the expert at this. So please, please teach everybody what is this program in general terms and then what changed recently and why it's so exciting. Yeah, uh, Robert. So as you had said, this is a first time home buyer program, mortgage program specifically for home buyers in the state of New Jersey. So it's been around, I think its inception was maybe 2026, maybe. So we're going 20, on. 20, wait, 2016. 2016. I'm sorry. 2016. <laughs> 2016. Right, okay. Yeah. 2016. So we're looking at about seven, eight years. The program has changed a little bit over the years, but for the most part, it's been a $10,000 grant program for first time home buyers. 10,000 so, historically that uh, if you qualify for the program that the state of New Jersey will give you as a first time buyer and we'll define what first time buyer actually means in a second. Um, and you can use that towards your down payment and closing costs. 10,000. Correct. Correct. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Okay. Very so nice. we have, and I, I I shared it up with you, Robert. We got notification uh, about a week ago. I believe it was October fifth from the NJHMFA. So the NJHMFA is the governing body that issues this grant. It's the New Jersey Housing Mortgage Finance Association. It's a lot so, of letters. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be one of their participating lenders. So my company, NFM, is one of their participating lenders. And we, for all intents and purposes, uh, pre-approve the buyer and originate the loan. And when the loan closes, it goes to the state for servicing. So in our process of approving you, we're approving you based off the guidelines of your program, whether it's VA. So this program can be a VA loan, a USDA loan, a conventional loan, or an FHA loan. So that's that, that's yeah. like the, the four most common loans, right? Like yeah. so pretty that's much right. potentially any buyer with almost any loan product could potentially qualify for this program. Absolutely. It's over the years, it's expanded. So it was originally just FHA, and then it's expanded into the other programs. But basically, what we do is we qualify you for a conventional, an FHA, a VA, or a USDA loan. And then we look at a set of secondary uh, requirements that the state has for the program. So again, it's, it's a loan with $10,000. And here are the basic qualifications. You need a 620 credit score. You need to have two years work history. You need three years of filed tax returns. Okay. And you cannot have assets in the abundance in your bank account that would enable you to put 20% down on the house. So if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar house and you have $30,000 in the bank, that means you could actually put 30% down on that house. So you'd be disqualified from the program. So interesting. that's the basics of the program. And of course, you have to be a first time home buyer, which the state defines as somebody who has not owned a house, been on a deed for the past three years. Why I add that last part is in some cases, 
if a parent passes away and they pass the house down to you and you go on the deed and then you sell it two years later, you, for all intents and purposes, was a homeowner, regardless if there was a mortgage on the house or not. Wow, that's pretty, so three years. So if I owned a house and I lived there for 20 years and I sold it in, I don't know, five years ago and I've been renting because it just made more sense to me, I would be considered a first time home buyer. That's correct. And you would today. be qualified for that program. Right. And like using those numbers, you said you have, you can't have more than 20%, the assets equivalent to 20% down. Does that include retirement accounts? It does not. They're okay, so retirement li liquid assets. So they're excluded. Retirement accounts are yeah. excluded. So I could have a million dollars in my 401k and it's irrelevant. Correct. Correct. Wow. So and I I could buy well, let me, I mean, this is great. Yeah. This is really interesting. I could so what if I'm looking for a four hundred thousand dollar house? And I have forty thousand dollars liquid, so I have ten percent down. Potentially, I could still. You would qualify. Qualify for, the for this program. I mean, obviously, there's other elements to qualification, but the bullet point qualification, like the first, the first pass, right? Wow, yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, and, they know, look at yeah six six twenty credit score is the minimum. Mm -hmm. Uh, that those are the basics, you know, we will get into the nitty gritty of your finances and what specifically is needed. But as long as you have those basic items, you're qualified for the program. So, you know, back to a recent update, which I see you just pulled up, Robert. So we get newsletters constantly with updates to the program. OK. And the big piece here was that that ten thousand dollars is great. For, but in most cases, that doesn't cover the entire expense of buying a house. True. Because you have a down payment, but then you also have closing costs. So let's use easy numbers. Two hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. on a FHA loan requires three and a half percent down. So, uh, you know, you, you're looking uh, at seven K. Yeah. Right seven seven thousand dollars down. And then that leaves you three thousand for closing costs. There's probably a good chance that your closing costs, if I were to just guesstimate, you're probably going to be in the neighborhood of 8,000 plus in closing mm -hmm. costs. Yeah. So you're looking at about 4% in closing costs. So eight plus seven, you're at 15,000 and the grant only gives you 10. So the exciting part, you know, our reason for this video is the update that we got that now, if you look at this, uh, update right here. And if I just scroll down a little bit here to this chart, you can see that they are now offering in addition to the first grant. And let me just clarify that the counties listed here. Okay. So you see here, Bergen, Essex, Hudson. So like the Northern counties, you actually get mm -hmm. 15,000 and then the counties near us, Atlantic, Burlington, Camden, Cape, May, uh, Cumberland, Gloucester, Salem, Sussex, Warren, you get 10,000. Okay. So depending on what county you get, that'll determine if you get 15,000 or 10,000. And then this next column here is this extra added update that now they're offering an additional $7,000 to first generation home buyers, bringing the total to 17,000 and 22,000, depending on what county you're in. So, so let me repeat that. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So they added this extra layer of possible money that they want to give if you're a first generation in your family home buyer. Yep. If I understood well, that correctly. So another 7,000 potentially. And I guess that same concept where you said, well, what if you were on a deed less than three years ago because it was inherited property and you sold it, you'd be, you couldn't qualify because you couldn't qualify as a first time home buyer, let alone that, that, first generation piece that's tough to prove though right like who's let's be honest like who's checking and like who's checking to see if my grandparents owned a house if I, so it's like, it's really current uh present ownership so if we look here uh, underneath the chart uh the state defines what a first generation home buyer is so okay. it's essentially an individual whose parents do not presently 
have ownership interests in any real estate, residential real, real property in any state. Okay. So that covers the parent portion of it. As long as your parents don't currently own a house, you're considered a first generation home buyer. And in addition to that, if you're buying with a domestic partner or your spouse, they also would have to meet that three year requirement of not owning any property for three years for you to be considered a first generation home buyer. So I want to make sure I understand this. This is fascinating. So sure. theoretically, my parents owned a house for 30 years. They retire. They sell the house. They said, we're just going to rent. We're moving to Florida and we're going to rent. Right. And they're, they've been renting for five years down there. I want to go buy a house now. Potentially, I could qualify as a first generation home buyer. Yeah, as long as today, huh. when you come to apply for an application with me, your parents don't own any residential property, you're good. You qualify. So <laughs> I'm going to be devil's advocate. How do you freaking know? Come on. How do you so, know? Like, <laughs> who's checking that? So what, <laughs> what they do is uh, on the back end of our system, there's a system called Data Verify. OK, it's essentially uh, let's call it a judgment background check service that we're required to do against you as the home buyer. It doesn't cost you anything. It just gets ran by our processors in the background and it'll link you to properties, known associates, things like that. Now, what's going to have to happen in order for you to qualify for that extra seven thousand is that we're going to get the title company involved. So what happens is. When the title company runs a title search, okay, the state requires what's called judgment searches. So they take your name, date of birth, social, and current address, and they check uh, court systems to determine if you have any judgments against you, okay? okay. What they're also going to do is we're going to get that information of your parents. So you're going to have to provide your parents' name, date of birth, and social, and the title company is going to have to do, uh, I don't know the name of the exact search, they do a search to determine if your parents own any property whatsoever. So that wow. combined with our data verify report is going to determine that you they do not own any property currently. So I guess the short answer is there's a way to check. Yes. Within yeah. reason, I guess. No, no system is perfect, but within reason. Always. So let's say somebody qualifies for this program. Whether it's the ten thousand or the full seventeen, that money I guess shows up at the title company as part of the process of working through you. And cool. it, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So essentially, what we do yeah. is when you go to buy a house and you're taking out a three hundred thousand dollar loan, us as the mortgage company, we're wiring three hundred thousand dollars to the title company. So now, in this case, if it's a three hundred thousand dollar loan, and then you're getting seventeen thousand. We're wiring mm -hmm. three hundred seventeen thousand to the title company. Okay, so, so I, I don't. I'm a believer that you don't get nothing for free in this world. So, what happens? So, like that's seventeen thousand or ten thousand. I mean, they're both great numbers. What are the strings? Like, can is it is it actually? Am I paying for it somehow? What happens if I want to sell the house? How does that work? What if I want to refinance it at some point? Like how? Like how sticky is that glue for that 17,000, you know? So believe it or not, the there's very few strings attached to this, okay? Wow. The only string once you get the loan is that you keep this loan program for five years, okay? So, but guess what? You're not prevented from selling the house. They don't say you can't sell the house. There's just a penalty if you do, a prepayment penalty. So when you get this loan, they want you to keep, stay in this loan for five years. After five years, it's not their issue. They don't care. Okay. Wait, wait. You, you're referring to it as a loan, is the, and, but we've also referred to it as a grant. This, the 17000 is it a separate lien on the property? Like. So, they lien the property in case you try and sell it, but you don't make payments. So for all intents and purposes, it is a true grant. 
but you could also look at it as a 0% loan. So you're making no payments on the 10,000, you're not paying it back, but they attach a note to the property. So if you go to sell your property, the title company will pull a, uh, a property search and determine that this note is attached to the property. And they do that on purpose because they don't want to lose out on, well, they don't want people that don't truly need this to take advantage of it, to just get in a property real quick, get a few bucks and move out. So that's why they attach it as a lien, which makes it look like a loan to the house, but you don't pay it at all. You're paying principal, so interest, taxes, homeowners insurance, and that's it. You pay nothing back on the $10,000 unless you sell or refinance inside of five years. You pay the penalty. Okay. So there's some kind of a payoff if I keep my house or refinance it in less than five years. There's some kind of penalties you're calling it. I guess it's a payoff of some type. Um, but after five years, that 17000 in our example is just gone? So, yes, correct. So what happens after five years, you don't know it anymore. So if a title company does pull a, a property search and that note comes up, within the note, it you'll see, because it gets recorded with the county records office, it'll say in there it's a five-year forgivable. So they don't need any further documentation to do anything with it. Wow. So I guess it is kind of free, like yeah. literally. Yeah. And they and want it. Yeah. And I get it. I get why the five years, they don't want you, they want like a real estate investor or some, you know, they want people to really have home ownership. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty cool program. And the fact that you can now jack it up to 17,000, that's like almost double. <laughs> you know yeah. what they were offering that's pretty powerful yeah. yeah and you know a quick note i want to just throw in there if you do yeah. sell or refinance you just have to pay the full amount back so depending on what market you're in you might not care if interest rates drop down to four percent you refinance from eight to four percent over the life of the loan you're probably saving two hundred thousand dollars in interest so do you really care that instead of saving two hundred thousand you're saving 183,000 because you had right. to roll in an additional 17,000. No, you don't. So we always look at those as a case by case basis to see what makes most sense for the customer. Wow. Um, can you actually layer a closing cost credit in on a transaction like that too? Like a seller concession? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever wow. the program allows. So FHA yeah. allows you uh, upwards of 6% seller concession. Uh, so, you know, let's say you get the seven. To be perfectly honest with the 17, you might not need much of a concession depending on the purchase price. But right. let's say you're buying it on a $380,000 house. You're, you're all in with down payment. Closing costs might be 21, 22. You can ask the seller for $5,000 if you'd like. Are there income limitations? Mm -hmm. That's okay. where it gets a little complicated. The state has charts, so it depends on the county. It depends mm -hmm. on how many people are living in the house as well, too. And then if you're over certain limits, I can put you in another category that just gives you a higher interest rate. So it's not a blanket number, but I would say two Two people households upwards of 144,000 in total gross income, a single household, you know, around a hundred. But mm -hmm. if you make closer to 140, you could still get the program. You just have to take their higher interest rate. All right. So that makes sense too. So, I mean, you could be making a nice living and still qualify for this program, but if you're making a half a million dollars a year, it's probably not the right program for you. You should have probably some money not. saved up and approach it, the home buying concept differently. Right. You know, yeah. um, all right. So there were, there's a lot to unpack in that program, Mac. I appreciate you sharing all that. Guys, if you are interested in this program, Mac's contact information is down there in the description and notes section on our YouTube channel. As always, Mac, I appreciate you sharing more mortgage stuff with us. Um, so if you want to get in touch with Mac, go for it. If you want to get in touch with our team, same thing. Our information is down there in the description box. If you want our two teams to collaborate and help you own a home, we're here to help. Please like this channel, subscribe to our, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and please share this video.
comments are welcome. We will see you guys again real soon.